So simple interest has a simple equation or formula. It is interest equals the principal times the rate times the time. And interest, of course, is the amount of money you earn by investing. Principal is going to be the original amount, whether you borrow it or invest it. Most of my examples, I think all of them have an invested amount, but it works also if you borrow it. But it's the original amount. The rate, of course, is the percent the percent as a decimal and time is always in this formula always in years so let's go ahead and try so Gene put $450 in an account earning 2.3 percent interest and plans to leave it in the account until his senior year or his senior trip to Europe in six years how much interest will he earn so we're going straight for the interest. So again, I equals PRT. And as a license plate, you know, I've kind of noticed that that would spell I party, which if you can earn interest, maybe you can throw a little party. But the interest is what we don't know. The principal we do know, 450 times the rate. Now remember that 2.3% is 2.3 over 100. So be careful that you don't put 0.23, divide 2.3 by 100, and you get 0 0.023 times the time, which in this case is 6 years. Well, since they're all on the same side of the equation, there's no inverse operations. You simply multiply the three of those together. And that equals $62.10. And that's how much interest would be earned. Now, if the question ever asks how much will he have in the account, then you would need to do the $450 plus the $62.10, and that would equal the amount in your account. But this one just asks how much interest will be in his account, or how much will he earn. Raven earned $37.14 in interest from an account earning 3.1% interest after four years. How much money did Raven put in the account? So this time we are looking for, and sometimes it's a good idea to write down what you're looking for, we're looking for the principal. Now I still start by writing out the formula, I equals PRT. I'll always write it out generically first, and that way I make sure I get my numbers in the right spots. A lot of times people just start plugging in the numbers in place of the P, the R, and the T, even if they don't belong there. Well, this time, the interest is what we have, so I replace the I with 37.14. The principal is what I don't know. Again, I like to put those variables at the end. The rate, this time, again, it is uh, divis you have to divide it by 100, so over here on the side, 3.1 over 100. On a calculator, divide 3.1 by 100 to make sure that you get the right number. 0 0.031 times the time, 4 years. And I'm going to put the variable at the end. Now I can go ahead and multiply 0 0.031 and 4 together. Some people like to go ahead and divide both sides by 0 0.031 and then divide both sides by 4. You know what, that's the same thing and there's nothing wrong with that. But I like to multiply them together and that gives me 0 0.124p. And now I do inverse operations, which is to isolate p by dividing both sides by 0 0.0124. And then I put that on to, into my calculator. And that equals 299.516, and it goes on from there. And that's the principal, which, if we're going to round to the nearest dollar, 
is two or not dollar a uh, penny, two hundred ninety nine dollars and fifty two cents. That was the original amount she deposited. Seems a little odd. Why it wouldn't just be three hundred? But we did it all right, so that's what it's got to be. Josue has $500 and wants to earn at least another $100 in interest. He can leave the money in the account for six and a half years. What interest rate does he need to get to earn the interest he wants? So this time I'm looking for the rate. Again, let's start with I equals PRT. This time, of course, I won't have the R, that will go at the end, but I do have the interest, $100. The principal is $500. The time is 6.5 years, and then I put my variable at the end, T. Oh, not T, R. I want the rate. There we go. So again, I like to go ahead and multiply those numbers together. If you want to divide 100 by 500 and divide it again by 6.5, that's okay. So 100 equals 3250R. And then we isolate R by inverse operation, which is to divide both sides by 3250. And that equals 0 0.03. 3076 and it goes on from there. We don't need that many. We're going to round to the nearest tenth of a percent. So when we round it, and of course we have to multiply by 100, so times 100 to turn it into a percent, that's 3.07, so it rounds to 3.1%. And that's the interest rate he needs to earn in order to make the money that he wants. I think this is the last one. Marcy has $250 she wants to invest in an account that pays 2.9% interest. If she wants to earn $50 in interest, how long does she need to leave her money in the account? So this one is looking for the time, specifically the years. So instead of time, let's put years. That's what we're looking for. So again, I start with I equals PRT. This time I'm looking for the T, like I tried to last time. The interest is $50. The principal, 250 That was the original amount deposited. The rate is 2.9%. And again, to turn that into a decimal correctly, 2.9 per 100 or over 100, so 2.9 divided by 100, and that will give you 0 0.029. And the number of years is what we're looking for, is time. I'm going to multiply 250 times 0 0.029, and that equals 7.25, and we keep our variable, t. And now I do inverse operation to isolate t. Divide both sides by 7.29, uh, sorry, 25. And that gives me 6.89655. So it goes on from there. And that's the time, so that's years. So if I round it, I could round it to 6.9 or seven years approximately, but I'll go ahead and we've been going to the nearest tenth. But make sure you put on your units, years, if we round it correctly. And that is simple.